All right, so I've been working on a chicken tractor uh, so they can forage around, eat grass and bugs and things like that. Um, it keeps them more occupied that way. Um, so this chicken tractor I'm building, I, I went online and I searched all different types. I mean, everybody's got their own version. And of course, mine is my own version for, for my needs. Uh, so my chicken tractor is going to be, not for meat birds, because mine are uh, strictly for eggs, what, what we're using them for. So it's going to be a chicken tractor for egg layers. And we're going to have nesting boxes in there, uh, roost bars so they can sleep at night. Uh, and this mainly, as far as right now, as I can see, it's, it's going to be mainly for, for the spring and summer. Um, when winter comes, they're going to go back into the regular coop I have here so they can stay nice and warm. Um, so spring is around the corner and I got to get this thing done. And let me show you how, or at least how far I've gotten so far. All right, so this is the basic frame so far that I've built. Again, the bottom is two by six uh, boards. These side boards uh, here are 12 foot long, okay? But the main structure, the main frame is 10 feet from corner to corner, okay? And it's eight feet wide. In the corners here for the corner bracing, I used some uh, one by six fence boards that I had left over um, on each corner. Now this is the back portion of the uh, tractor and this is the front portion here. I put two boards here in each corner because I'm planning to put some uh, the water there and the feeder over here or something like that. Uh, but it's some, it's, it'll utilize its space good with a feeder or water there. Um, so I made do that. Um, what else? Um, four by four construction for the corner post. Uh, yeah, it's a little overkill, but it's, it's heavier duty. And I wanted this to be more solid. A lot of the ones online I saw, they're kind of flimsy and that's okay. Uh, because it's lighter, but I want this to be more solid, more, uh, um, just more heavy duty. That's all. Uh, Let's see, I have yet to put the front door on and all that, but right now what we're going to do is I'm going to build the, or I'm going to bend, I should say, the conduit for the roof here, and I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to do that next. All right, now for the roof here, what I'm going to be using is EMT electrical conduit. Um, I marked mine from one end up to here. I put a little magic marker here. Uh, 52 inches and then from here to my next mark here is 34 inches. That's where I want my bends. They're going to be 45 degree bends. Let me show you how to make them. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a conduit bender. Uh, these things aren't cheap. Okay, this one here was, I think it was 87 bucks. Now they have the one inch, that's what that I have because I have one inch uh, EMT conduit. They have the three-quarter, half-inch, but what you need is a one-inch here. Um, and make sure it says on here, one-inch EMT on it, okay? Um, let me show you the markings here and where to place your marks. All right, guys, I don't know how well you can see this, but you see right here, you got this radius right here, and you got a little notch right here pointing to it, that means the center of your radius. So here is a notch. Straight down, you'll see this little notch here. That means that's where you want the mark on your uh, conduit to line up right here, okay? Not, let's see, where are we here? There's also a little star right here. Don't worry about that. We're not gonna be using that. What we're gonna be using here is the notch right here on this, on this radius right here. Because we want to put that notch, that's telling you that the uh, notch will be in the center of your radius. So your 45, it's going to be right in the middle, right there. All right, guys, so our first mark, you can see it's right there. Okay, we want to put this in the conduit bender like this. And remember that half circle. 
that's where you want the mark, right? Right there. Okay, and that's where you want your line to line up. Now what you want to do is make sure your mark is right where it's supposed to be, right here. Right where this radius is, right where that notch is. And we're going to bend this pipe down uh, until here, see 22 and a half, here you got 30 degree, and here you got 45. You want this lined up with this 45 right here, okay? But we're going to do that right now. All right, guys, again, make sure your mark is lined up here, right in the middle of that radius, because that's where the middle of your radius is going to be. You want to bend this pipe right down to your parallel with where it says 45 here on your, uh, on your tool here. Put your foot down at the bottom and grab it and just start pulling down. Now you want to make sure this is parallel with the 45. And that's pretty good. And the whole time that mark stayed right there. Okay? And now when you take it out, you got your first 45 degree bend right there. Now you can see where I marked it is right in the middle of this radius. And you just do the same thing for the next bend. Make sure your line is lined up with the notch there. And you got to make really sure that this bend here is nice and aligned with your uh, bending tool, okay? Because in other words, you want it nice and straight like this. You don't want it turned off to a side like that, okay? You want it nice and even in line with your tool. So let me realign that. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks good. And the same deal. Put your foot down at the bottom and pull down. You have to like jerk it. And that should do it. Now, if you've gone a little too far, you can easily put this on the ground, kind of step on one end and kind of push the other end. Just a little bit, it'll, it'll, it'll go. And if you need to bend it more, just put it back in the tool and bend it a little more, that's all. All righty, so. Looks like we're good. All right, guys, so this is what I've done here for the rear tires. Uh, so after I move it, what all I have to do is take the nut off the axle, lift the uh, nifty handle I put on here, take the tire off, take the tire and the axle off, and lay it right on the ground. Now these plates here, um, I just put them here to keep the wood from wearing out. Uh, you probably don't even need it, real to, uh, be, to be honest with you, because th these do have bearings, so the axle's not actually turning, it's the bearing here. But anyways, just as an added extra strength for it, um, I put these plates here so the hold doesn't wear out as easily, that's all. Now when it's time to uh, move the tractor again, just lift it up. Put the axle back through, get the other wheel, and then uh, get your nut here, put that back on, and you're ready to roll. Alright guys, so this is what I've come up with so far, uh, basically a tow bar. This is a uh, fence post actually, 
uh, seven footer. I think it's one and five eighths. I don't remember. I think it's one one and five eighths. Um, I think it's seven feet long. But anyways, and at the end, I made it so we can just detach it and just put it back on like that. Um, made a little uh, a little dolly, I guess, or toll dolly, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's very simple. You just push it down like that, and then I can just tow this around anywhere I want. And also, for my riding lawnmower, it's 13 and a half inches off the ground where I connect it here in the back. Uh, so when this is at 13 and a half inches, it looks pretty parallel right there. All right, so let me bring you in close, and I'll show you how I built this. All right, guys, so this is fairly simple here. This is a fence post, and I'm pretty sure it's a 1 and 5 eighths fence post, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, seven feet long. Uh, I got some U-bolts here that I strapped to a 2 by 4. And then down here, I got a small piece. Uh, I think it was 5 and a half inches wide, uh, the length of this board down here for the axles. And let me flip it over for you. So what I did is I sandwiched um, the axle between two 2 by 4s here, okay? And let me show you what I did. All right, so what I did here is I got um, these 2 by 4s and on my table saw I put a V here, 45 degrees, and I started very small and I kept trying on both sides, on both uh, 2 by 4s here. Um, I put a small uh, or V on here, and I put, I put a small one, and I kept going wider and wider until I got it just right to where the uh, axle sat in here. And when I sandwiched it in between, I can barely rock them, so it just hold the the axle uh, fairly snug. It doesn't have to be tight because if I were to tighten these, it would have cracked the uh, the two by four. But it doesn't have to be tight uh, or really super tight the the axle in there. And the axle is a five eighths. Uh, threaded rod uh, going through there. Alrighty. Oh, and now the end here. Alright, now for this, this is a uh, trailer hitch that I uh, picked up at, uh, where well, I don't even remember where it was, Home Depot or somewhere. Um, the smallest one they had there, I think it's three quarter inch hole here, and it actually fits pretty darn good into this one and five eighths. Uh, bar here, or uh, a pipe here and I just had to lightly square this tube up and it fit in there really tight and I had to just kind of bang it in and it was very tight I measured where the hole was for the pin for the trailer hitch here drilled through there and uh, worked out really nice <laughs> 